three stocks, the March 2020 edition. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up everyone, my name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. I know you like timestamps, I left them for you down below on a pinned comment along with a link to previous episodes in case you wanna check those out. All I ask is that you please hit the like button if you enjoy the video as it really helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. As always though, this monthly series is not a recommendation to buy or sell anything. That is not the purpose of this channel. You should always do your own research and make your own decisions. Now, having said all of that, uh, we just had a couple of really bad days in the stock market, and that is a result of the whole uh, coronavirus outbreak. I'm just gonna refer to it as the CV. By the way, thoughts and prayers, of course, go out to anyone affected. Uh, but uh, as you might recall, uh, last month's episode, we took a look at three stocks that I felt would be heavily exposed to the CV and kind of be affected by it because two stocks were uh, travel stocks and then one stock was a Chinese stock. So uh, I figured that would be kind of an interesting video because those stocks might be impacted more heavily and maybe create some buying opportunities for the long term. However, in this month's episode, we're going to do things uh, the opposite way and we're actually going to take a look at three companies and their stocks that I actually think have very minimal exposure to the CV outbreak in terms of like traveling or requiring people to be outside and moving around in order to use their products. So these are companies that can still make a lot of money off of you, even if you kind of just stay at home. And that's because all three of these companies are very heavily based on like internet technologies and online advertising and things like that. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now, I do just want to uh, clarify that the whole CV situation now that could result in an economic downturn in which you know basically every company would be affected uh, because spending would go way down and it would kind of trickle down into a bunch of different areas but I'm just kind of basing this video in terms of like hey these companies don't really need you to be outside and be moving around and traveling uh, so they may not be affected as heavily as something like travel stocks or even Chinese stocks or things like that. Um, now, I know someone's going to ask me, hey, did you go out and do any buying right now because of these uh, last two uh, really bad days? And yes, if you actually follow me on Instagram, you would know that I actually bought a Visa stock <laughs> for the first time ever. And I know I've been receiving a ton of comments from people, hey, when are you going to buy Visa? Because we've talked about it a lot on the channel. I finally bought into Visa. So it's a very tiny position. I'm looking to hopefully continue to add to it over time and make it a much larger long-term position. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and get into these three stocks for this month. And these are all very large, very reliable high quality stocks, in my opinion, some of the best kind of long-term investments that almost anyone can kind of build a portfolio around. The only issue is that they have very high valuations, uh, but if this whole coronavirus turns into a bigger drop in the stock market, then that kind of takes care of that issue of these very high valuations. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and start with stock number one, which is actually gonna be the highest valuation stock or what we would consider to be kind of the most expensive stock. And that's going to be the online shopping giant in Amazon. Ticker symbol AMZN, and obviously this is a company that relies heavily heavily on you just kind of staying at home and doing your shopping from home rather than going outside and visiting a bunch of stores and things like that. So they have very minimal exposure to that kind of side of the whole CV outbreak. But when looking specifically at online shopping, Amazon is so incredibly gigantic already, yet most people don't even realize that their e-commerce market share in America is still less than 50%, although it's definitely climbing fast. But that also depends on who you ask, because researchers at eMarketer recently reduced their estimates to less than 40%. And when looking at global e-commerce sales, they also estimated that Amazon only makes up about 13% of those uh, sales kind of globally, and just about 5% if you exclude the United States. And by the way, that was actually before the most recent cut to their estimates, so it's probably even less. So when I hear like everyone say that Amazon has already seen all of their growth in online retail, I think they're very wrong. Amazon still has a ton of room for growth. You also have to keep in mind that online sales still only made up less than 14% of all retail last year, but the market is growing to astronomical heights every year and should be approaching $5 trillion pretty soon. Meanwhile, Amazon has an incredibly sticky 
business, according to a recent survey from feedadvisor.com, when American consumers check prices before making a purchase, over 80% of them check Amazon, while close to another 80% use it to check for product reviews. On top of that, Amazon already has over 100 million Prime members in the United States, and the vast majority of them are not likely to end their membership anytime soon. Of course, with Amazon, you also get the largest cloud player in a $100 billion market with 33% market share, according to Statista, while Microsoft is quite a bit lower at 18%, and then everybody else is in the single digits. On top of that, you also get the third largest player in the US online advertising market that has very likely surpassed traditional advertising at this point with very high growth, and Amazon is even likely stealing market share from the largest player in Google. Of course, the market is soaring to extremely high amounts in general, so all companies will continue to benefit from it, but the point is that Amazon is quickly becoming a bigger player that you know should be taken seriously. And then there's also a ton of other things that Amazon is doing that we don't have nearly enough time to cover in a short video, but all of this has built up a company that is doing around $300 billion in revenue a year. Like that's 300 billion with a B. And yet they're still growing at close to a 20% clip while EPS is also expected to soar by 30% on average over the next five years, which is extremely high growth. Of course, the valuation is sky high as even after dropping by close to 10% this week, uh, being dragged down by the broader market, they are still up by over 400% over the past five years, leaving them with a forward P ratio of close to 50 and almost a $1 trillion market cap, which is obviously very large. Still, if you think that you're going to get a stock like Amazon at a cheap valuation and it's not during like a recession or a major economic downturn, then good luck, because this is one of those stocks that just always trades for a rich valuation, and it's just one of those cases where you get what you pay for. Again, the valuation is high, I agree with that, but at the same time, I also think that part of that is due to the fact that Amazon reinvests a lot of their profits to continue growing, and at the same time, I know that they're almost at a trillion dollar market cap. I actually think, and, and I've told you this before and I'm sticking to it, that I think Amazon will be the first company to reach a two trillion dollar market cap. So I think long term, any of these kind of short term issues will have ultimately proven to be buying opportunities for the long term, in my opinion. And it's uh, one of the reasons why it's my second largest stock and I continue to own it. Okay, moving on to stock number two. Uh, this one's going to be a cheaper valuation. And then when we get to stock number three, that'll be the cheapest of the bunch. But uh, this one is going to be Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G uh, or G-O-G-L, doesn't really matter. But uh, this is a company that I also think has very minimal exposure to the whole kind of CV outbreak in terms of having to be outside and traveling and things like that. Because whether you're watching my channel on YouTube or you're using Chrome or maybe you're using Android or maybe Google search, whatever the case is, uh, they have tons of ways that they can make money off of you and they don't need you to be outside in order to do that. And it's one of the, it's just one of the reasons why they're already so massively large and yet they continue to keep growing at some very impressive rates despite you know, their already big size. And when it comes to that size, you're talking about close to $200 billion in sales expected this year at still very high growth of around 18% with about the same type of growth for their EPS as well. And I know that everyone thinks of Google as some massively large and already overvalued stock, but the reality reality is that it's actually not that bad when you take everything into consideration. Yes, a forward P ratio of 22 is generally considered high, but not for a company like Google. In fact, it's only a little higher than the sector median while their PEG ratio is actually flat with the sector and there is no way that Google deserves to be trading at the middle of the pack like some kind of mediocre stock. In fact, almost every analyst uh, that is up on uh, Yahoo Finance has a buy rating on this stock. And not only is it trading well below the highest estimates and well below the average estimates, but it's even trading lower than the lowest estimates, which is not something that you see very often. Now, to be fair, the stock has absolutely skyrocketed over the years, so I completely understand why so many investors refuse to buy the stock. In fact, I've avoided buying the stock myself just because I'm so used to buying my stocks when they're dropping heavily, but 
what you know when it comes to Google, that just happens to be a stock that rarely dips. But if this whole CB situation keeps dragging Google lower, which did result already in almost a 10% drop this week, then I'm gonna have to just jump in at some point because they have very little exposure, like direct exposure to this whole CV outbreak anyway. In fact, they did almost $135 billion of advertising revenue last year. And again, they dominate the digital ad market with the most market share. And that has almost nothing to do with people traveling around the world or being active outside. Uh, meanwhile, they also control over 90% of the internet search market with Google, Google search, over 64% of the browser market with Chrome, over 74% of the mobile OS market with Android, which even beats out Windows, by the way, if you include computers and tablets, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, they have the second largest email platform with Gmail. They have the fourth largest cloud platform in the world with Google Cloud. They dominate the US mapping market with Google Maps at over 150 million users in the United States alone. And even their Waze app has more users than the next closest competitor in Apple Maps. And as if all of that wasn't enough, they also have the second largest social network in the world by users at over 2 billion monthly active users on YouTube. And of course, because Google is so large and they are able to collect so much user data, they're also a huge play on the future of artificial intelligence and are even making some big moves in autonomous driving with their Waymo business that has already launched a trial version of their robo-taxi service in Phoenix with the Waymo One app and are even testing autonomous freight trucks that transfer equipment to their data centers. Anyway, the point is that I just don't think Google deserves to trade a lot lower because of the CV outbreak. And while I do feel that this whole kind of CV situation could lead to a little bit of an economic slowdown and that could trickle down into how companies spend their money on advertising, which would affect Google. Uh, at the same time, I also feel like there's a major transition occurring right now from traditional advertising over to digital advertising. And I feel that Google is the biggest play on that as well as on the future of like artificial intelligence and other things too that I think will be very big over the long term. So I still feel like any kind of short term dips will ultimately just be long term buying opportunities for a stock like Google. All right, guys, and that brings us to stock number three. And this is going to be the cheapest valued stock in the bunch. And this one is a stock that I actually think has been a buy for many years, but they just don't get the amount of respect and attention that I think they deserve from Wall Street and also even from me. And that company is, of course, Facebook. Ticker symbol is FB. And uh, this is another company that could be pretty heavily affected by an economic a downturn as companies spend less money on advertising, which Facebook does rely on. But in terms of being affected by the CV outbreak, uh, more kind of directly, Facebook just really needs users to be logging onto their social media platforms, and they don't really need you to be going outside or traveling in order to do that. So I feel that the impact is a little bit uh, more minimized as opposed to other stocks out in the market. And that's because just like Google, Facebook is heavily reliant on digital advertising. In fact, it makes up around 98% of their total sales. And when looking at that uh, advertising revenue by quarter, you can see that it's been jumping by around $4 billion year over year when looking at the fourth quarter, uh, which is very impressive. And obviously the numbers are even bigger for the full years as they generally jump by around $15 billion. That's a lot. And that's led to the second most market share in digital advertising, at least here in the United States. And it's also helped them gain even more market share year over year, despite already being so massively large in the space, which may be causing Google to actually lose some. And in any case, that mostly stems from their leadership position in social media as Facebook currently leads all other networks with almost 2.5 billion monthly users, while number three, number four, and number five all belong to Facebook as well. And the lowest one of them being Instagram is actually the one that I think has the most upside potential despite already having over a billion monthly users, which was actually recorded over a year ago. So that number is likely a lot larger by now. And while I agree that there's probably not a lot of growth left in Facebook.com, at least kind of in the long term, I guess, uh, they're unbelievably strong balance sheet with over $66 billion in current assets with very little debt at all. And a current and total ratio of both over four means that they have all the money that they'll ever need to either launch new networks, 
themselves or even acquire them like they did with both WhatsApp and Instagram. Meanwhile, their business is incredibly strong with sales growth of around 20% or more a year despite doing over $70 billion in revenue last year alone. Meanwhile, they continue to rake in huge profits every year and even though their net income did tank in the first two quarters of last year because of some really big fines from the FTC, those issues were all fixable and their EPS growth is expected to return to much higher growth levels of over 40% this year and close to 20% the year after, leaving them with a very attractive valuation of only an 18 forward P ratio for one of the largest, most dominant social media and online advertising companies in the world, yet they still trade 7% cheaper than the sector on a forward P ratio basis and over 30% cheaper on a non cap PEG ratio basis as well, which is you know very interesting because this is a company that I think should be trading higher. Uh, anyway, while Wall Street continues to underestimate Facebook, at least in my opinion, they continue to invest in things like business enterprise with Facebook Workplace, augmented and virtual reality with Oculus, original programming with Facebook Watch, and of course, they're still aiming to launch a cryptocurrency called Libra, even though it, it has been facing some challenges. But at the end of the day, I just really feel like Facebook is one of those stocks that is kind of consistently underappreciated by Wall Street. And look, I completely understand the concerns over things like growth when looking specifically at Facebook. In fact, I don't even use Facebook myself. I'm not a fan of the platform. But at the same time, I feel like I'm always kind of being proven wrong. They continue to have um, a, a very large numbers of, of users and they actually continue to grow those numbers as well. And at, all the meanwhile, Facebook continues to bring in huge profits that continuously fuel their balance sheet and also fuel uh, future investments into uh, areas of growth and things like that. So while I'm personally not a big fan of Facebook because the only platform that I actually use is Instagram. And so investing in Facebook would be kind of going against my investing principles a little because when I invest in a stock, I, I, I like to either use a lot of their products or, or be very passionate about their products. And I'm just not that passionate about Facebook. I don't really like social media that much. Um, but if uh, this stock continues to get dragged down because the company continuously proves me wrong, great business performance, and, and always has a pretty cheap valuation. So if the CV situation continues to drag the stock down lower, I may just have to bite my tongue and buy into this stock because it's uh, pretty attractive when looking at some of the fundamentals. So anyway, that's how I feel about uh, Facebook and these other stocks. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I would love to read those and respond to as many as I can. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, it really means a lot to me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks again, take care, bye-bye.